neck to release and the head to release so don't hold your neck tight you should really feel the neck hanging from uh, from the head and then from this position you can see your legs you can see your feet so think about pushing the thighs back away from your chest there it is pushing the thighs back opening the back of the legs extending from the toes to the front ankle and then extending the heels back and down keep the arms stretching up and the moment we come into downward dog this tends to happen you see we tend to move the weight on the outer edge of the hand. So I want you to counteract this, resist this. Keep your attention there. So as you tuck the toes under and go into the pose, think about keeping this part of the hand down. There, press this down. That's it. Now tuck the toes under and come into the pose. Attention to that point. Good. And now press down the hand, especially that point between index and thumb, and lift from the wrists to the elbows, to the shoulder blades. Very good. Now, look to the right, look to the left, move the outer upper arm back towards your thighs. There it is. And now move the thighs away from the chest, Open the back of the heels, extend the heels back and down. Bring your feet here. So the next way uh, in which yoga, the practice of yoga poses can be used as a starting point for movement improvisation is through inviting the student to work with principles of the pedagogy. Um, so, in this respect, um, the movement is a lot freer and uh, is not connected to the asanas as such. Uh, but the students are working with specific uh, principles uh, of the pedagogy. Uh, you can see um, Erika uh, working with a very clear uh, sense of articulation uh, from uh, the shoulder and exploring the movement of her arms through the um, successive joints. Um, and this is very much what is happening in, in, in the yoga class. Each movement is explained in terms uh, of uh, the joints and what the joints are doing in order to enable the movement. Um, and we also see it is the successive progression from the uh, bigger uh, joint to the, to the smaller uh, joint. So she starts from the center of the body and moves on to the periphery. Uh, and we can clearly see that the movement that is happening with the wrist and the fingers is very much informed uh, by the movement in the, in the shoulder. Um, so the student begins to develop um, a, a spreading of an awareness, a realization of how different body parts affect each other, and also an ability to uh, originate the movement in different parts of the body. So she begins to understand, for example, that the movement with a hand does not need, uh, needs not to start with the hand, but it can well start from further closer to the center of the body, from the shoulder, for example.